Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Look Back, where we go back and take a look at games that came out a year, five years, and ten years ago. Well, not that they came out. That's when I did the reviews of them, sorry. And I see what I think about those games now. So, let's get started here with games that came out, or I reviewed, last year. So, first of all, we have Growl. Growl is a werewolf wannabe. In fact, it's kind of touted as a game that fixes werewolf, and I just didn't really like it. It just felt too lucky, a little too... I didn't feel the decisions were really strong. You're drawing cards and playing cards and other people. I didn't... I, I like a game that makes me think I know what everybody is. This one just didn't work for me. Dracula's Feast New Blood. I thought this would not be a game I like from Jelly Bean Games, but in actuality, it worked really well. Uh, you're trying to figure out the roles of everybody. It's almost a family-style deduction game, a silly Dracula game. Rap Gods. I almost think I might drop this to a 6.5 at some point because the game itself is fine. You know, you're trying to be a rap god. I just really didn't like the theme. I'm not a big rap fan. That's probably part of it. But if you do like this and you like the artwork and everything, then I know a lot of people do really enjoy this game. And I think the game itself is fine. Exchange. This is a stock market game. Uh, I, I like stock market games in general, but they're usually very convoluted. This one is really simple. It's a very easy to get into game, uh, and it's almost a party stock market game. I liked it a lot. Pan Am. I, this is the game nobody was expecting in 2020. A game about a defunct airline that evokes a lot of emotion in people, but a good, solid, economic-style worker placement game. I mean, it's not a heavy game by any means, but it offers some really good choices, and it was sold at Target. I'm pretty happy about that. Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion. This is an escape room style game, but it's more of a story based one. Very heavily themed Scooby-Doo. Very well themed. A lot of good choices. It's the first in the line, although there's only two games out in this line and the other one's uh, a horror themed one. But this one I thought worked really well and for families I think is a good game to play. Chicken War. This is a deduction two-player game from Think Fun. As you're trying to, you know, you're you're trying to figure out what your opponent's chicken is, their who their general is based on different traits and stuff. So there's a little bit of uh, almost battleship mixed with deduction. It's a hard thing to uh, explain, but I thought it was a fun, interesting game. Tech Henhu, Obelisk of the Sun. So this is in I call it the T games, and this one here is has gotten some good buzz to it. Not as much as you know the first couple games in this series. But it does do well, and I like this one. I like the idea of this shadow. If there's any complaint I might have is that occasionally you're forced to take an action, and there's not very many actions in the game, which is very, very substandard. So you want to try to avoid that if possible, but it has some really cool ideas in it. And I think this one will grow on me. Then Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. I mean, what is there to say about this? This game is amazing. I loved Gloomhaven. I was curious, how would a beginner's Gloomhaven work? Well, to that matter, I'd rather play this than Gloomhaven. The way it teaches you to play a complex game, the book having maps in it, it is amazing. It is a fantastic, terrific thing. And the fact that this is sold at Target still kind of blows my mind. All right, let's jump five years ago. The Prince's Bride. I hate to kill you. I hate to be dead. Uh, this is a two-player dice game. Nah, it's okay. Uh, I, I still want a great Princess Bride game. Creature College. This is for Happy Otter Games. It's about bidding on monsters. The artwork is very cute. Works well for kids. Garbage Day. A stacking game. I forgot this one existed. It's a garbage can, and you're putting cards on the outside of it, and there's a little hole in the card, and you need to make that hole so you can see empty space. So the cards keep going out, and eventually it falls over. The theme about throwing trash at a can and you won't want to be the one who makes it all fall over. I like it. It's an interesting little dexterity game. Guilds of London. Now this one has been criticized for its symbol symbology in it and I and I don't disagree. There's a lot of symbols in it. This one is a pretty solid game. This is the kind of game like, eh, I would play this one again and every game's going to be different depending on what guilds come out in any particular game. This is a, a cool game. You should check it out. Push it. This one I was not expecting to be good at all. It's just a little dexterity game. Comes with some discs. It feels like something someone could have made in their spare time, and they probably did. But it's cool, it's clever, it's portable, and you get to flick stuff. 
Dominion Empires. So, wow, it's so weird to me to think that Dominion Empires, which feels like a new Dominion expansion to me, is five years old. Man, how time flies. This one is a good expansion. has a lot of cool cards, a lot of victory point cards in this one. Uh, and, well, a lot of these, I play Dominion all the time, so why would I not like it? Then Ice Cool. Now, Ice Cool, just, wow. This is one of the best one of the best uh, dexterity games out there. Flicking these penguins around. The first time I saw it, the first time I flicked a penguin and was, you saw you can make a curve and go through things, I was I was sold. This one has done incredibly well. It's played almost at every Dice Tower convention we have just because people love it. So, yeah, this one has grown for me. Ten years ago, we have Noval. A really bad little Uno-style game. Forgettable. Habitat from Valley Games. This one about animals right being in the right habitat just so lucky and so blah i didn't really care for it 11 a little soccer game from nestor games and it just didn't work for me at all so i think soccer games are notoriously difficult to do anyway and i did not enjoy this one felenia now this one me and z still make fun of in fact i played this with z 10 years ago i remember this it's now they rethemed it to dragon boats of the four seas that's the new theming of it but this game in which there was humanized cats for no reason like and the cats aren't even delivering catnip and stuff no they're delivering um you know uh cloth and gold i mean it's it's the only thing that's different is someone drew the people as cats that being said taking out that weird theme i still thought it was not a very good euro game it was pretty boring but that weird theme makes me never forget this one godzilla kaiju world wars from toy vault come on where's a good godzilla game Oh, actually, one came out last year from uh, uh, Funkoverse, um, or Funko Games. So that's a much better Godzilla game. This one, just forget it even existed. The Hunger Games Training Days from WizKids. This one would be a better game if WizKids hadn't really, really kind of made the components so small and so just barely there. The cards are small, the box is small. Screenshots from the movies. The production here hurts this one a lot. And then it's an okay game on top of that. Furstenfeld. This is a Friedman Fries game about making beer. You don't often hear this one mentioned on his top 10 games that he's done. And for good reason. It's, it's meh. Maybe a little bit less than meh. Figure Grand Prix. An ice skating game. I like the theme of ice skating. That's a pretty good idea. But this was just an okay card game. Struggle for Catan. Now, there's a lot of Catan games out there. In fact, I'm going to be talking about another one today. Um, but Struggle for Catan was a card game version of Catan. Don't get this mixed up with the two-player card game of Catan. This was a card game with a deck of cards, resources. It just wasn't as good. It really pales. Some games, you just can't turn them into a different game. And I think Catan is one of those. At least into this game, it did not work as well. Assist. This is Angelo Parazzi card game. He usually does silly themes and stuff like that. This one is not silly, and it's it's okay at best. Um, Mage Storm. This one I dropped the point. I like the idea of Mage Storm. It's a combat style game with some cool, interesting ideas, but it needed expansion. Sometimes a game needs expansion. It needs more stuff. This one died on the vine. Nothing else came out for it. And then I just never played it again because I want to build new armies and stuff. I didn't think there's enough in the base box. Nestor tiles. This is a bunch of just different tiles. You put them together and play games. I, when I was a kid, I had puzzles that looked exactly like this. Um, and that concept just came with me. I like the idea of using these Nestor tiles to build things. D&D &D Conquest of Narath. This is one of those games that I look at and I go, ooh, I wish I had this in the Dice Tower Library. This is a game a lot of people don't talk about, but it's essentially Dungeons and Dragons, Axes and Allies. Um, it's a two versus two game in which you use monsters and different things. You are in each other's face right away. You have to fight. It's attacky. It's a very good game. I like it a lot. Rivals for Catan. So here's the actual, this was originally called Catan the card game, but it's not, it's not again, it's, it's easy to get these mixed up. Rivals of Catan is a two-player Settlers of Catan card game. And it's really well done. It is a nice back and forth. Um, it, 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 it's very much not like Catan at all, but it has the same kind of theming in it. It's a good game, and you should check it out if you want to look for a two-player game of Catan. 
Say Anything Family Edition. Say Anything, one of my favorite party games. The only reason I'm dinging it a bit here is because a lot of other party games have surpassed it. But this idea of what's a breakfast cereal that I would never eat. Everyone writes an answer down, and then I pick one secretly, and you all try to figure out which one I picked. It's a good game with nigh infinite replayability. And then Airlines Europe. Oddly enough, this one was just played here at Dice Tower Studios, not by me, but by some other people, and I was so happy to see it get played because this is a light, 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 light stock market game. It, it feels like a slightly heavier ticket to ride, sort of. Um, it just, it, it's so simple. The concepts are there. It is a great, great game, and I will always keep it in my collection. And that's it, folks. Those are reviews I did one, five, and ten years ago. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Look Back on the Dice Tower. Yeah.